What's going on, brews? Today, we are going to be talking about these guys, this guy, this TCG, and this video game. It's been a while since I've done any of these This Week in Pokemon videos, but uh, this week, naturally I had to come back and talk about two things that are not exactly Pokemon, but very, very close, and being compared to quite often, especially right now on the internet, especially as far as Power World goes. So, first of all, when it comes to MetaZoo, I'm going to cover that first, and then we're going to get into Power World, and uh, yeah, I'll probably finish just showing you some of my own personal gameplay with Power World. So, MetaZoo. In case you've been under a rock for the last only 12 hours, I think is very recently, MetaZoo is officially dead. Kaput, no more. Now, people like me, people, anyone that even closely pays attention to COVID and how things have gone since COVID, MetaZoo dying was a foregiven conclusion that a lot of us assumed was going to happen. However, this is actually kind of interesting because just recently, for MetaZoo to collapse, close down, shut down operations, be done, within just a couple months of literally you being able to buy MetaZoo on the shelves at Target. Not only that, Hello Kitty? I think Hello Kitty is like the second or... It's like the second most popular IP in the world behind Pokemon. And they like just released a... a a new set featuring Hello Kitty stuff like in November. So in one short quarter, MetaZoo went from having a, a set, a brand new set featuring one of the biggest IPs in the entire world. And Target does not have a lot of shelf space, okay? You get Pokemon, you get One Piece, you get Yu-Gi-Oh! Now you get Lorcana. And for the next one to be MetaZoo on the shelves at Target, that's actually a really big deal. And so for you to be able to buy MetaZoo at a place like Target, plus they're doing partnerships with, you know, an IP like Hello Kitty. And then like a week later, they're just done. We're out. We're done. It's over. Sorry. Like, one, it's very expected because we're going to talk about what MetaZoo is. I'm going to... Let, let, let's bring it back. Let's talk about MetaZoo from the beginning. So, during COVID, in March of 2020, there was a Kickstarter called MetaZoo by Mike Waddle, Waddle, Mike Waddle, something like that. Now, during COVID, there was a plethora of TCGs. There's two things that happened during COVID that a million TCGs showed up. And a million people started creating their own grade card grading services. Um, so that was really popular during COVID was to make to do card grading services. And then TCGs was another really big deal, like fad. And so what happened with MetaZoo? MetaZoo was a very successful Kickstarter, very successful new TCG during COVID. But then the owner of MetaZoo decided to start dabbling with the crypto bros, the NFT dudes, okay? MetaZoo is a TCG based on cryptids. Cryptids are like fairy tale creatures, yada, yada, yada. The, the artwork, the artist, all of that part of it involved is actually very beautiful. Like, I'm a fan of the way MetaZoo cards look. Absolutely. But this is something that was comprised of no real in-depth the tcg itself the actual card game no one gave a shit about everyone that got into metazoo was in it for the money the pump and dumpers the crypto bros the nft bros okay so the owner of crypto zoo made a conscious decision to get into crypto and to get into NFTs. And what that does is it opens the floodgates to people like this. Okay? So once you get the Logan Pauls of the world and 
all the investor bros, okay? You are now flooding your fan base with people that don't give a shit about the product. They just give a shit about money, okay? So that was their first big mistake, was absolutely getting way too into crypto. Maybe it's just because cryptid, crypto, ooh, ooh. Um, but it's not, it's not a good move. Okay. At least not in 2023, 2024. So crypto made a bunch of mistakes. They got in it with the wrong people and they developed a huge, huge fan base early on that weren't even actually fans that weren't even actually people playing the TCG. So you take that combined with someone heading the operation who apparently does not make very good financial decisions because if you're on the shelves at target and you still owe people money and you can't keep the lights on that's piss poor management okay so metazoo was a fad filled by pump and dumpers during an era covid when TCGs were just showing up left and right, like flesh and blood. There's one that actually did survive. It's doing well. Lorcana is obviously after the fact, but the idea was conceived of during the fact. Um, but yeah, so MetaZoo, I actually own a little MetaZoo. And here's the funny thing about that is every single MetaZoo product that I own, I'll show a little video of it. I literally paid one total dollar for every box that you see. Everything that I got that was MetaZoo related was during clearance on a clearance table during Christmas. And not knowing anything about MetaZoo, just being a guy who likes to buy TCG products when they're on clearance, I bought a, I bought so much. Like in all those boxes, I have packs in them. Like I paid maybe thirty total dollars, and I have like a massive little, you know, MetaZoo sealed collection and open collection. But yeah, that's how down and out MetaZoo was. Entire 10, 15, 20 dollar starter boxes were going for one dollar to the point where someone like me was like, Oh, I guess I'll just buy all of them. It's almost free, you know. So RIP MetaZoo. I you know, it's the only thing that's shocking about it is the timing given that they're at Target and they just had what appeared on the surface as a successful partnership with Hello Kitty. Turns out they printed like 8,000 boxes and they only sold like 1,500. So they didn't even still like one-fifth of their stock in their most recent set release. That is not anything that would ever happen in Yu-Gi-Oh! One Piece or Pokemon. Okay. Anyway, enough about MetaZoo. RIP. You know, it is what it is. Oh, another thing. Rudy. This guy. So when you get people like Logan Paul involved, who, by the way, Gary King Pokemon, what, dude, come on, like, you're cool, we love you, but you steer the ship so wrong so often, it's, it's like, Gary, you need, you need like a PR person to help guide you for your, your decisions out, out in the world, okay, but yeah, so you get, you get alpha investments in there on top of all the investor bros that Logan Paul brings, okay, alpha investments, his fan base, his clientele, his people, they're all sealed investor bros. All of them are sealed investor bros. You can't start a TCG and just build up nothing but sealed investor bros and think that everything's not going to collapse one day. That's what happens when you get crypto NFT investor bros involved in your business. Okay? Like, we should know that by now. All right. So let's get real quick. Finally, to Pal World, yeah. So, so first of all, there's a lot I want to say about Pal World. This game is fucking fun, dude. This is literally to a T what Pokemon fans have always wanted out of a Pokemon game. Just a very thorough, very deep very open real world catch all the mons explore go have fun level up and enjoy the environment like this game i don't give a crap that on the inside under the hood a large amount of this game is just borrowed mechanics borrowed materials and it got repackaged into this beautiful free here's the thing this game is setting so many records okay i have xbox and i have game pass I had no intention on playing this game. I didn't. I saw the hype. I know all about it. I pay attention to all that. 
but I wasn't going to actually play it. I wasn't going to pay the $24.99 or whatever on Steam to buy it. But then I saw it was free on Xbox Game Pass. Okay. A game that in most people's mind is a perfected Pokemon game that has become so popular in one week that its average concurrent player base has dropped over 2 million. 2.1 million people are playing this game that is at most $24.99 and if on Xbox, completely free and still having fun a week later, still making content. Now you got a Pokemon card guy making a video talking about it. This game, okay, look, we're gonna just throw up some, some footage, okay? One, companies, video game companies copy each other all the time. That's, if, if it wasn't for Street Fighter being so popular in the 90s, we wouldn't have Mortal Kombat, okay? Like, this is what happens. Game developer studios make something, and then they make Fortnite, and then next thing you know, there's 20 BRs, okay? That's just the way it goes. Um, and so, for anyone to throw shade at the Power World developers because it's somewhat similar to Pokemon, it's like, yo, okay, so there's balls and you catch them. Every single creature is uniquely created. The environments... There's only so many ways you can do a snow environment, a desert environment, a fire environment, a tropical environment. So don't, no one owns any of that. You could say the, the ball catching, the catching of the monsters, that's the only actual ripoff. This game looks way more like a Zelda game. This game is literally Zelda plus Pokemon together perfected for under $25. And the response has been massive okay and how does this relate to pokemon this lights if god if they even have any idea this should light a fire under game freak's ass okay not because oh no pokemon's gonna fail it's the biggest ip in the world the merchandise the the plushies the the cards the anime there's nothing that will ever ever touch pokemon in in the near future but seeing the success, you know, not out of fear, but out of like jealousy, I think Game Freak can take a lot of notes from this game, Pal World, because this game, Pal World, has, is uh, accumulating a Fortnite, you know, an epic amount of money very quickly. So this could be the new adventure survival game for the next five years. And if Game Freak doesn't come out with an equivalent that's as good or better, every new Pokemon game that comes out will just be compared to Pal World. And everyone will say, why isn't that like Pal World? Why isn't this like Pal World? Why are they still doing these really shitty, lame games that adults have a hard time playing and only children enjoy that are way too easy? Why can't you just make your game like Pal World? Give it a little more of that open world Zelda vibe. Give it a little, uh, make it a little edgy. Make it fun, but make it deep. Okay, anyway, I am going to get back to playing Pal World. Um, you know, MetaZoo, RIP. I don't know what, how any of this, this is so unique. I don't understand how a TCG that's doing well enough to where it's almost viewed in the top five, it's in big box stores, it's doing partnerships with huge IPs, just turns the lights off, we're out of business. You know, I, <laughs> like I, I knew it was going to happen because I was buying it for a dollar a box, but to see it happen and to see it come full circle in four years, like, man, MetaZoo, like, ay ay ay. so... Any future TCG creators, make sure you emphasize the TCG aspect first. Make sure you don't invite the wrong people into your house, like the Investor Bros and Logan Pauls and all that kind of crap. And yeah, you, you got to have like the right reasons on the surface, because if it's all about money, it's going to collapse. Someone's going to get money and a lot of people are going to lose money and then there's nothing left and then it's a memory and, a co and YouTube videos is all it is. So anyway, MetaZoo. Sucks to be you, Pokemon. Just watched another another TCG roll roll down, roll on the side of the road as they just keep on trucking. But seriously, Pokemon, Game Freak, oh my God, 
Power World did what you should have done 12 or 15 years ago is start making actually good video games. Deuces!